it all shard fixing here and I'm having an uncomfortable day. My stomach's upset. Feel that thing going on in my mouth. But see my pretty purple hair? New pretty purple hair. Still don't have a new mask, sorry. It was my plan to make a mask, but haven't got there yet. So this is my new series. This was always my intent. Know thyself. Um, this is always, had been my intent when I first started thinking about doing vlogs. Because uh, I'm not really that exciting of a person. Um, and it's still about me. But it's also about things. Like books, comic books, music, movies, cartoons. You know, different things that are part of my life. But also how they affected or may have been been influenced by other things. So today we're going to start out with um, an author, Marion Zimber and Bradley. Now I spoke about her before in a vlog a while back, which was kind of a precursor for this when I talked about the books that I read. Um, Marion Zimber and Bradley was kind of my introduction, really to other types of writing besides the basic hero, heroine, you know, try to save and change the world kind of thing. Uh, she opened up this whole different thing. Now, before we get started on my own reflection and my own rep opinions, I'm going to say this again. Um, Morian Graylin, who is Marion Zimberman's daughter, uh, after her death, in 2014 came forth and said that Marion Zimmerman Bradley was this horrific child abuser. Now I'm, I, this is me, will always validate and listen to you and go with the um, person who has been abused. Um, I think that the overlapping of uh, parent to child abuse is even worse because the children, as in in my case, and other children that I've met. We want to be loved by our parents, but we also, that love is, is intertwined with um, abuse. So, so Marion Zimmerman Bradley was part of a, a time period in which I was um, trying to define myself. Now, I didn't know anything about Marion Zimmerman Bradley at all. I don't really read about my authors of books. Her writing was at a time that I was searching out who, what it meant to be female. Now, it's kind of sad in retrospect because at the time, in the 80s, I didn't know nothing about how she was treating her daughter. Because if I had, I wouldn't have read her at all. I wouldn't have even been interested. It would have been... <clears throat> bought the books because of the characters. So it kind of is one of those things where I have to think about it. I, I in no way want to endorse a child abuser on the same, on the, for money, I don't want them to make money. Quite a few people who wrote in her anthologies uh, donated their money. They were horrific by that whole aspect. Um, had such an impact on my life and I'm, and others, if you read about, um, she helped create the Society of Creative Acronism, the SCA, which so many people are part of now and ha has had a big part in many people's lives. She was very active in um, lesbian groups and women rights groups. She was into helping young writers, you know. And no one knew of this dark side of her, which is pretty much how secrets are. Very few people ever know the dark secrets that are part of people's lives. Um, I'm sure many people didn't know, you know, until later when my father became more loud and got in trouble with the law, I'm sure many people when I was young didn't have any idea of the um, things that went on in our house. Because it's horrible to look up to someone and then find out that person is as bad as people that you might have been getting away from in your life. But I'm going to go on and talk about the stories because they did have an impact on me. Uh, as I was a teen in 1982, I was 17 years old. And I was, I kind of remember this rather vividly. I was at the library 
and I was looking for something new to read. Um, I was really looking for a female writer who kind of represented more in line what I was thinking about how women should be. Because I was really starting to move into that non-gender concept. I was really starting to believe that even if I didn't want to, I should be able to be allowed to do the same things that a male was. And I shouldn't be discriminated against because I was female. And that was really kind of the overtone that was going in the early 1980s from 1975 to 1980s. It was that whole kind of thing. What do I know of the 1980s? For me, it was always rock and roll, drugs, and self-aware. <laughs> in, in 1982, I was looking for a book. And the book I came across was Hawk, Hawk Mistress by Marion Zimmerman and Bradley. And I, I read the back and I thought, hmm, this seems like a really interesting story. And it's about a teenage girl who runs away from her home uh, because she's being forced to marry someone she doesn't want to marry. And she feels that she can survive and take care of herself. Unbeknownst to her, she has these powers, which kind of all go along uh, for the where this area was come. So, Hawk Mistress is a Dark Over story, and Dark Over is a planet that um, Marion Zimmerman created that um, on it, people had psychic powers. The idea of psychic powers was very prominent in her storylines. So, I read that book, and I really liked it, so I started reading the Dark Over series. I like a lot of the Dark Over story series, but I only have a couple that are my favorite. I like Storm Queen, which was a very sad story about a very powerful female and power corrupting. And then I like the Forbidden Tower, which was about getting away from what was expected of you. Uh, and then that the Keeper or a virgin who had high psychic powers decides she wants to get married and you find out how much, how much manipulation is done to this person to become these powerful people, these keepers, which were very powerful in Dark Over. Um, so I really was into the Dark Over series, and I, uh, one of my the other books that I really liked it there was um, Dark uh, Dark Over Landfall. And the reason is I always like to go back to the beginning. I want to know how people how how people got to what they were doing. So how did the people on Dark Over become the way they were? Sword and Sorceress, which is another series that I got very involved in because I was really into Red Sonia. I had been collecting Red Sonia since I was, you know, like, I would have to say probably about 13 years old or so. So I really liked that idea of the Sword and Sorceress. And the best thing about the Sword and Sorceress stuff is, though, it's not really her work. I mean, there might be some pieces and parts of her in there, but for the most part, it's just her editing and it's other people's works. And from that, um, I was introduced to some really strong um, writers like uh, Elizabeth Moon, Diana L. Paxson, uh, Jennifer Robinson, who I will talk about at another time because she is absolutely one of my favorite writers uh, of that time period. Uh, Mercedes Lackey, oh, another one. In the 90s, she became like the thing I would, I read all of her stuff. And then um, Glenn Cook. So Glenn Cook is my all-time, all besides Piers Anthony, all-time male favorite uh, writer, and I will always read stuff by him. Uh, his earlier stuff is a little harder to read, but it, in the 90s style parts, that was really, really my favorite. Um, the other Marion Zimber and Bradley book was The Mist of Avalon, and I like The Mist of Avalon, which is really the only book she wrote by herself, um, because... It gave you a different viewpoint of the King Arthur story. And I think that I liked Mr. Avalon the best because it's opened up where people started writing more like that. They started taking these these popular um, stories, you know, nursery rhyme stories, uh, hardcore male kind of stuff, and they started to switch them around and give you an, an experience that was a little more wholesome, like, uh, and not wholesome like good, but a whole story. So all the characters in it were starting to be represented. And then that, that kind of segue into the 20s, 20,000, that's not right, 2000s, uh, <laughs> where villains were starting to get a say. 
people were starting to um, encompass the idea of, of, of two-dimensional, one-dimensional storylines and making them more two-dimensional, fleshing them out and giving that aspect on both sides. Yes. I don't really read about authors or songwriters or um, comic book writers or anything. I don't get really in depth. And so that's kind of like what, what the series is going to make me do. It's going to make me go back and look at the writer and myself and the connections that there are. Uh, the th horribly, I didn't really find out anything about Marion Zimberman Bradley's uh, abusiveness until last year. And it came out in 2014. But it had been done to this person all of her life, which was all through the writing of these books. Um, so, I don't really read Marion Zimmerman Bradley anymore. Um, she, there's still, uh, her Swords and Sorceress were published well into the 2000s. I just, I think like anything of all my books, I kind of move beyond. I'm like moving beyond. So every, I, I go through phases where I move beyond because I kind of looking for things that represent how I feel, but not necessarily um, how the world feels. And the world in the 80s was a very strange kind of place because we were coming out of, um, in, in some places in big cities, people were already starting to break away from the traditional roles, but in places where I had grown up, traditional roles were still very much there. It was, it was pretty much assumed you were going to get married. You could go to college. That was, the, that was the improved thinking if you were female. You could go to college, um, but you would end up getting married and you'd have children. And, and your family would come before your uh, children. You, you know, your children would come first. Family would come first. Your husband, your children. And then everything else would be extra after that. And... I didn't want to go that way. I wanted to run away from that and move on. And that's how, what my reading reflected for me. So, if you guys have, you disagree, you agree, you want to have some conversation, go ahead and leave some in the comments. Um, tell me what you think about this new series. We might have to flesh it out a little bit and see how we like it. Uh, I think the next one coming up possibly is a movie. But I don't know. I, I will start planning them out a little better. I've been thinking about this one all week since I really wanted to come across with not saying I did not believe her daughter. I believe her daughter 100%. Um, even when at the time in 2014 there was a lot of people uh, saying, oh, no, no, this this wasn't the way. And then after, it, after more people start, her brother stepped up and more people started to step up, it began to look like um, that's the way it is. Marion Zimmer Bradley, though, by then was dead and would have no way of yay, nay, or whatever. And, and no one would ever, her daughter would never get any satisfaction from knowing that now the rest of the world knew. But, um, again, I won't, I'm not advocating that you read the books. I'm not advocating anything. All I'm saying is you can go out there and research it yourself, and that's pretty much how Know Thyself is going to work. It's all about how this affected me. I was devastated when I found out. Not because I, I don't believe that people have secrets and stuff like that. I was just devastated that a person that had such a big impact in my life ended up being just like everybody else that I knew in my life. That, you know, um, a disappointment. It was a disappointment. All right, so that's it. I'd like to leave it on a happy note. The happy note would be that, um, I don't know. I don't know a happy note at this point. I guess it, the happy note is that uh, Morian Graylin was able to get out and tell the world exactly how she had been treated and people believe her for the most part. I'm sure there's people out there that don't believe her because you can research it. And, you know, there's people that have made comments about that. I, but, so the, the, that's the plus. And I think that's, that is a reflection over a period of time is that in the 80s, people were coming forth with accusations, but nobody was listening to them. In the 90s, people were still not listening. But by the time we got into 12, 2015, 2014, 2010, people were listening. 
And now, people listen a lot more. All right, so I'll catch you all on the flip side. This is a long one. They're probably, these are probably going to be a little longer, and I am out of here.